Hey everybody, so today's question is unique paths. In this, we have given a grid of M into N and we have to tell that how many unique paths are there to go from left top corner to the bottom right corner. Also, we know that we can only move in right and downward direction. So let's see, say hi to the robo. <laughs> now, we have to go to the flag position. So let's try to reduce the problem. What if we want to go to the, this position? We are already there. So it will take us zero ways. To go to this position, we have only one way that is going in right direction. To this also only one way. To this also only one way that is going to the right direction and so on. Also, for the down cells, we have the same situation. But for this cell, we can either go right and down or we can go down and right. So we have two ways. So it is two. So and for this, either we can go down, down and right or we can go right, down and down or we can go down, right and down. So we have three ways and that's actually visible because we can see that to go to this cell, we have one way and to go to this cell, we have two ways. To total, to go to this cell, we will have three ways. And that's how we can easily find our ways. So for going to this, we will have 2 plus 1, 3. For this, 3 plus 3, 6. For this, 3 plus 1, 4. For this, 6 plus 4, 10 ways. And for this, and so on and so forth. And finally, we will get our answer that is 28. So we have total 28 unique ways to come to this cell. So we have done it easily using our 2D array. And we are just calculating the value of, of previous right and top cell. So here's our code for the question. But can we also do it in sufficient space? So yeah, let's see. We have taken the 2D array, but what if we rotate it so that our row have less length? Then we know that in this grid, the only useful row in last to get our answer is this. So why are we keeping track of all this? Can we just easily take an array of three and keep updating it until we get the last value? So let's see how we will do it. So for example, we are taking our array of three here. Then we are iterating it over the value i and j. So these are the value of i and j. So this is j0, this is j1 and this is j2. So when we will have 1 as j, we will change this cell. And when we will have j2, we will change this cell. So when we have i and j1, what we are saying is just add the value of previous cell to it. So previously, our cell had the value 1 and the previous cell had the value 1. So 1 plus 1, the answer we will 2. Then when j is equal to 2, previously it had the value 1 and the previous cell had the value 2. So the new value will be 3. And then again, when it is 1, our previous value was 2 and our new value was 1. So it will be 3. And same, when our j is 2, our previous value was 3, the new value is 3. So it will be 6. And we can observe this, that. And we can observe that this box looks similar to this box. Because we are doing the same thing. Please remember, every time we are updating the array, I am just showing the previous version so that it is easy to understand. Then we will move forward and we will keep updating our array until finally we will get our value. So this is the final value of our array and this is the array we will get finally. We can observe that doing this we got the same 2D grid but very efficiently. And in last, instead of having a full 2D grid, we had just this row and our answer. So that's how we will implement our question. The code is very short, but the understanding is very important for this question. So I hope this is clear. Give this video a like. And thanks for watching. I will see you guys in the next one.